Hi, my name is Haley Roos and today we're going to be learning about life cycles. You've probably, you've definitely gone through a life cycle yourself. You are born, you grew, you're probably going to grow some more and maybe someday you'll have kids of your own or maybe you won't. And then eventually you'll pass on and leave uh, the next generation to care for you, uh, the new one. And uh, I really like science, I really like art, and today we're going to combine that along with a fun game that we're going to play at the very end and you're going to make it yourself and it's going to be great. Now let's move on to what today's topic is. What is a life cycle? A life cycle is a series of steps living things go through from birth to death. These steps may vary depending on the being, but the steps that are always there are birth, growth, reproduction, and death. The end of a life cycle is the start of a new one, so it is commonly represented as a circle, like the circle of life. The life cycle may not always refer to a living thing, although that is what we will be discussing today. Some non-living objects like stars have life cycles too that take millions or even billions of years. Birth As we go through all the steps, we will be following the journey of uh, the first generation of a monarch caterpillar for a year. Let's start with the beginning of the life cycle, birth. Birth can be a live birth like how a human or a dog is born an egg like how frogs, birds, and most, most insects are born, a spore birth like mushrooms and ferns are born, or a seed that pine trees and sunflowers come from. There are special ways of birth where a living thing is divided to become two living things, but we will go over that in reproduction. The first yearly generation of a monarch caterpillar starts its life as an egg on a milkweed plant sometime between March and April. Once the egg is placed on the milkweed, it will take about four days to hatch. When the eggs hatch into baby caterpillars, or larvae, they are already on top of the plant they need to eat to grow. They can only eat milkweed, so if you would like to have some baby monarch caterpillars in your yard, be sure to plant some. Growth Let's move on to the second step. This one may not look the same in all creatures. Some insects and sea creatures have unique growth cycles where they go through two different kinds of growth. A caterpillar, for example, gets bigger in size like a human would, but then it wraps itself up in a cocoon and transforms into a completely different looking butterfly or a moth. When something drastically changes throughout its life cycle, such as in the caterpillar's case, we refer to it as a metamorphosis. The monarch caterpillar goes through a metamorphosis during its two stages of growth. First, it continues to eat the milkweed plant until it gets very big. Then it stops eating it to find a nice spot to attach itself to turn into a pupa or a chrysalis. The caterpillar uses silk to stick to the underside of a leaf or another safe place and hangs down. Then the caterpillar sheds its skin and turns into a shiny chrysalis. Inside of the chrysalis, the monarch caterpillar works hard to transform itself into a butterfly. This process takes about 10 days. Once the caterpillar is done transforming, a beautiful monarch butterfly emerges from the chrysalis, which it leaves on the underside of the leaf as it flies away. The butterfly begins eating again, drinking nectar from flowers and fruit, but it only has a few weeks, two to six, left before it passes away, so soon it will need to find a mate and reproduce. The later generations of monarch butterflies migrate and even go to sleep for a period of time, called hibernation, but we will continue to only follow the first monarchs of the year for the last two steps. Reproduction Living things need to reproduce if they do not want their species to eventually go extinct. Like birth, there are many different ways a creature can reproduce. The reproduction process varies in different species uh, too since there are many ways males and females of a species will try to get the other's attention. Birds may try and squawk the loudest while appearing colorful and performing a special mating dance for the other birds it is trying to woo before it makes a nest to lay an egg in. Once a creature has or has not mated depending on its reproduction process, it continues the new life cycle in different ways. Humans and mammals usually give live birth. In humans, after reproduction, it takes around 40 weeks of being pregnant with a baby for the parent to give birth. This number varies wildly in other species with live birth, with elephants being pregnant for 95 weeks and opossums for only two. Even in creatures that do not lay their eggs, there are little itty bitty eggs inside of them that will later turn into an infant form of the creature that once the creature has mated. Oak trees will drop special seeds called acorns. 
A seed is a little plant inside of a hard coating to protect it from the harsh environment and predators until it is ready to germinate and grow into a sprout or a seedling. In order to produce seeds, plants need pollen from other plants of the same species through a process called pollination. Bees and other pollinators transport pollen from the flower of a plant that uh, it grows in order to reproduce to other flowers. When the pollen from a stamen of a flower moves to the stigma, it is able to produce seeds in the pistil of the flower. Once the seed is formed, it is transported by falling to the ground or by being eaten and pooped out somewhere else by a predator. The hard shell of the seed protects it from the stomach of the animal that ate it in that case. Some plants make fruit with the seeds in them to be extra enticing to be eaten. Cells can reproduce by themselves asexually through mitosis or with other cells using meiosis. These cells that divide through mitosis are identical, while cells using meiosis have half of the genetic information from its parent cell. Cells made using meiosis can join together with the other cell that has half of the genetic information to reproduce. For example, an egg cell in a dog, when joined with a sperm cell of a different dog, can create a litter of puppies, and an algae can quickly divide itself in half repeatedly through binary fission in order to reproduce by itself. Mushrooms and ferns release spores. A spore is a very, very small organism that can become a full adult on its own without a parent plant or a mushroom necessarily needing to mate. They are mostly produced by meiosis and fly away until they hit somewhere where they can grow by mitosis into a hyphae in the case of a mushroom. A hyphae grows long branches underground like roots and is the main part of a mushroom. They grow fruit bodies above ground, which is what we can easily see when it is time to produce spores. Spores are so small that you can inhale them, and it can be dangerous if you inhale spores of mold that may try to grow inside of your lungs, so be careful. Fish and bugs may lay eggs. An egg is a casing that has a baby creature inside of it. An egg can have a hard shell like a bird egg, or be soft and squishy like a fish egg. The egg is usually laid in a big group, with only some surviving the egg stage without being eaten. Some parents of the eggs watch over them and protect their eggs and young even past hatching, but other creatures lay their eggs and forget them to do other things. The egg will hatch into a baby who may or may not eat its own egg or even its siblings in the case of bullfrogs for food. Monarch butterflies meet up and mate for during the short time they have left. Unlike many humans or penguins, they do not mate for life. When it comes to the time to mate butterflies, fly through the air in groups and attempt to fly into each other and fall to mate. When the female has mated a few times with different male butterflies, she lays her egg on the milkweed plant and begins the cycle anew. The final part of a life cycle is death. Every living thing eventually passes on to make room in the world for a new generation. When animals enter their senior stage of life, they may have less energy than when they were younger. In some mammals, like humans and dogs, their hair or fur may lose pigment and become white or gray. Death from old age or illness are natural ways to die, unlike getting eaten by something bigger or being killed in an accident. Monarch butterflies may only live for a few months, but thanks to the eggs they laid during the reproduction step, there will be more butterflies following them. Monarch butterflies are colored brightly to show that they are poisonous from the milkweed they eat and that you will get sick if you try to eat them. Despite this, there are both insect predators who will eat the caterpillars and bird predators that will eat the adults without getting sick. In most cases though, a monarch is most likely to die naturally and not be eaten if it manages to make it to the butterfly stage. Since monarch butterflies migrate long distances, it is also possible for them to be injured while flying and pass away from their injuries. Here are some interesting life cycles that break the mold of how it normally works. It might be through strange metamorphosis, an interesting reproductive process, or just a cool lifespan. Let's start with platypuses. Platypus is a strange animal. It looks sort of like if a duck and a beaver had a kid together. It has webbed feet, a long flat tail, venomous spurs, and a duck-like bill. It also lays eggs despite being a mammal. There are only five mammals that lay eggs, so the platypus is a special creature. They lay their eggs in a dirt burrow, and in about 10 days, the little platypus will be able to hatch. They are born hairless and unable to see or hear, and they need their mom's milk to survive. Yes, platypuses have milk like other mammals, but they do not have nipples. 
Instead, the milk comes from the female platypus's pores like sweat, and the babies lick it off of her belly. They're in this stage for about four months before they are able to leave the burrow. The platypus is born with teeth, but around this time the teeth fall out and are replaced with a flat plate used to grind food. They like crawfish and bug larvae. The platypus reproduce after they are around two years old and they can live for about 11 years in the wild. Another unique life cycle is that of a seahorse. A seahorse is a bony fish that has a long horse-like face, little fins, and a long curly tail. Seahorses hatch from eggs inside of the male seahorse's tummy pouch within 45 days of being put there. The eggs hatch into smaller but complete little seahorses. When they grow into adults and want to reproduce, seahorses have a special courtship ritual that they perform first. It has four complex stages that they do with each other before the fertilization process. Scientists think this may be in place to help synchronize the male and female seahorses to be ready to give and take the eggs from one pouch to the other. The female seahorses passes the eggs to the male's tummy pouch, and he is the one who feeds and takes care of them before they emerge into the ocean. They live for three to five years in the wild, and one of the biggest threats is habitat loss over time, or more directly, being caught in a fishing net meant for shrimp. Lastly, we will move on to the cicada. The cicada is my favorite bug, and sometimes you can find their shed skin stuck to things soon after it is time for them to emerge and become adults. Cicadas may not be something you see every day, but you sure do hear them in the summer when it is time for them to sing. Cicadas start out in a little egg that looks like a grain of rice that is placed by the mother cicada in a groove of a tree branch. They will be protected from the elements by the tree groove and will be exposed to the sap which they can eat to grow. Once it is ready, it falls from the tree limb into the dirt where it burrows underground to eat at the tree's roots. It may stay underground for 2 to even 17 years. After that, they emerge from the ground as nymphs and shed their nymph skin out into their new adult skin. Adult cicadas are called imagos, and soon they will start looking for a mate. The male cicadas sing their classic cicada song, the female cicadas respond, and the life cycle starts over. Cicadas can live one year or sometimes even 21 whole years. It all depends on the species of cicada if they're not eaten by birds, squirrels, bats, spiders, or even other bugs. Now it is time for an activity. Today we will be making a card game we can play to remember the different steps of the life cycle. We will be needing multiple sheets of paper, markers, scissors, and if you would like you can use printed out images, magazine photos, and a ruler if it makes it easier. Step 1 is to divide your sheet into 8 rectangles. First, fold your paper hot dot style to separate the ones in the middle, then fold it in half twice. Eventually you will get 3 lines evenly spaced apart to get re 8 rectangles total. These will be our playing cards. Ideally you want more than 16 of these, or 2 or more papers worth. Step 2 is to draw the steps of the different living things life cycles on 4 cards each. One for birth, one for growth, another for reproduction, and the last one for death. Continue until you have at least 4 different creatures done. Step 3 is to cut the cards out and place them in a deck. Step 4 is to clean up and play your game with the rules I'm about to show you, or you can come up with your own if that makes it more fun. Here are the rules. You hand out 4 cards to each two players and place the remaining ones in the middle face down and take the top one up from the stack and place it next to the stack face up. Then you take turns placing cards face up on top of the stack if they match from the same creature, like a caterpillar can be placed on a butterfly, or if they are in the stage, same stage of life, such as an egg card and a spore card, both being in the birth section of life. If you do not have a matching card, you need to pull one from the pile until you do. If you run out of cards in the pile before you have a matching set, you must forfeit your turn. The winner is the person who gets rid of all their cards first. Have fun with this game and I hope to see you next week. If you have any comments or ideas for another lesson, be sure to email info at communityworksla.org. Thanks and have a great day.